he has a lot of experience he has experienced a lot of things when it comes to drugs cocaine heroin weed cigarette and a couple of things he's kweku gardener uh, i'll always say uh, he has a story and today he's going to share his story with us kweku gardener how are you sir i'm doing fine are you sure you are fine very well <laughs> <laughs> I have watched your videos, a couple of them on YouTube. Yes. I think I watched one of your videos in prison. Have you been in prison yeah, before? Yeah, I've been to prison on seven different occasions. On seven different occasions? Yeah, with a maximum sentence of two years for one. Two years? Okay. Can you briefly tell me about yourself? Okay, as you already said, my name is Kweku Gardner. I'm a Fanti by tribe. I'm a Ghanaian. I live around Tesano. I'm a product of Prince of Wales College, presently Achimota Secondary School. From there, I went to Tech. I did architectural draftsmanship. But due to peer pressure, half parenting, and other exponential factors, I fell victim to the use of drugs, i.e., heroin, cocaine, cannabis, and anything that alters the state of mind. Um, at what point, uh, I don't know, you are saying peer pressure. Who influenced you? Peer pressure because it was a mate that introduced me to my first use of drugs. That uh, is um, uh, the weed? Uh, or? Not the weed. I started from opium before I came back to the weed and went up to cocaine and heroin. Okay. So yeah. I don't know what he told you before you decided yeah, to get He really child. didn't tell me anything, but it was upon persistent observation. I was in class with this guy. Uh, I liked him so much, so I was always attached to him. And somewhere along the line, between the hours of 9.45 to 11 o'clock, I see him different. A.M. or P.M.? A.M. In the morning. And that is the time in Achimota school we go for snack. Okay. So anytime snack is just about to get there, it, his mood changes. So I decided to ask him why and what he uses to alter his mood. Can you tell me what, what kind of mood? What were you seeing? Uh, normally, he is a half caste. Okay. So the hair stands upright with red eyes. And he speeds his rate of reaction. That means everything he does, he does it with an extreme speed and with reserved energy. So I was wondering where that morale was coming from. Okay. Until he told me that he's on something nobody should know. So I swore an oath of allegiance to him. And he took me to our sports field one day. It was there he introduced me to first shoot of opium liquid opium what is opium what does it do? opium is another sedative it comes from the opiate plant just like cannabis and okay the coca plant is here opiate is another sedative but he takes it in the liquid form because there are three siblings with a father and mother okay both parents are doctors the father is a russian the father is on the same drug opium the mother is on the drug opium the siblings all use opium so opium is the order of their day. So for the first time, he gave me a shot, a five milliliter syringe shot. Through your veins? Yeah, ultravenous. I didn't really see how important or how the thing was working. Was it on. painful the first time? It wasn't painful because of my outstanding desire to have the sedation. Okay. I didn't think of pain at all. So I took my shot and after 30 minutes, it was like I'm the same person. I thought I would look gigantic or a bit different as compared to his mood. So he told me that the thing is very expensive and he cannot kill his desire and save me. So what I have to do is I have to contribute for a better shoot. I didn't mind. I did what I have to do to get the you best. You gave him money? Yeah, I gave him money. In those days, it was 87, 88. I was informed to Achimota School by then. Okay. So I gave him something enough. He brought whatever he should bring. 
How long did it take him to uh, deliver the stuff to you? Now, nah, normally he's a day student, so he goes home just after every 2 p.m. Okay. So it was the next day after the first shoot that he brought the potent one. Oh, and behold, it was even before snack time, so I forced him that we go to our place of performance and we use whatever is there. Okay. And for the first time, he gave me a full syringe of the solution. I felt the euphoria very mildly until we started leaving the place. We were both high. And he, after school, goes back home. He's parked his car. But for me, I have to go back to the dining hall. And that day, it was a mess in the dining hall. What happened? Achimota is a mixed school. We sit with table on table with girls. There's about six girls, six boys. And that day, we were taking kinky and fish with pepper for lunch. Okay. Now, all of a sudden, I saw all the girls laughing at me. I didn't know what was wrong. Not knowing they had served me the kinky with the fish and the pepper in a different plate, I take the kinky and instead tap it on the table way far from the pepper and fish plate. And you were eating? I was busily eating and enjoying my kinky. And they were laughing at you? But you didn't know the reason why they were laughing I didn't know the reason why. So Nobody also told you that Nobody day. told me because... The stigma attached to my image alone was so fearful to comment. So, their laughing and fidgeting called the attention of the prefects. They came to my table and they saw me doing the same. I said, no, that not come. I went to, they took me to where the prefects sit, a higher table, where they can see the whole dining hall. They questioned me, no answers. Because the code of silence should reign all throughout. So what they decided to do is to give me punishment. Maybe that will help me come out with something. So they made me carry a bowl of kinky on my head while standing. And lo and behold, I fell down with the bowl of kinky myself and everything on the first table, flat, unconscious. They never knew what was wrong with you? No. Until they took me to Achimota Hospital and Dr. Sokbojo confirmed that. Are taking something that's highly sedated. And I even, even I never even confessed to him. You did not take it. Yeah. So from there, I saw it like, no, this heroin, this opium is too deaf. It will make you misconduct yourself in the midst of people. I needed something very cool but active. So I started chewing cannabis. After cannabis, I tried cannabis of over a period of almost four or five months, and I saw that the high difference wasn't so equal. Okay. So I need to get something that will equivate the high level, but better still keep me within limits. Okay. So I one day on vacation decided that no, I have to go out because normally. My father brought us up in some way that we don't go out. We didn't have that kind of exposure. Where are you okay. going? No. You are always indoor. Always in the house, your siesta, your lunch, that kind of thing. Okay, but let me ask you. After the first one, uh, the opium you took, the next day, your friend brought more or you decided to... My dad, it was the next day he brought the more potent one. Yes, and, the, yeah. and that was what you took. Yeah. And you were sent to the... But because of the disappointment surrounding what I took, the dining hall issue mm -hmm. and the other things... You were taken to the hospital. I was taken to the hospital, finally. Okay. So after, you continue or you decided to... I stopped. That was when and where I decided that I need to get a high that will keep me within limits and active to the euphoric level. So you so started with the cannabis I chewing. I started chewing cannabis. And when you chew cannabis, it's a 12-hour effect. Okay. Yeah. Chewing cannabis is very different. When you smoke it, you waste it. When you smoke? When you smoke cannabis, you are wasting the, uh, the THC in cannabis, the tetrahydrocannabinol in cannabis. You are wasting it. Because it best reacts with water. Okay. Yeah, the euphoria level is achieved. So, um, you after chewing for four or five months, you decided to move to some. That was when I was looking for something to occupy that same vacuum of euphoria. 
So I decided I have to reach out to myself and look for that which is good for me. So one Saturday, Achimota schoolboy, I packed my lunch bag, everything together with some drinks, some other things just to make me feel the beach that I was going to Labadi Beach. So that was my first time coming to Circle. Coming from a circle. Coming from a circle. I took a car from North Kanishi, South Tesano to North Kanishi and to Circle. So when I got to Circle, I met a friend who is also an Achimota. Hey, we couldn't end the way pay. As if you end the day, we call full day. Say, eh, na sisi a o coin. I'm so we call fall about the car. Then he said, no, he's also going there. He would like to go with me. No, no, okay, the same direction. The same direction. But before we go, let's pass Odona. Odona is the Sahara area, the ghetto area we visited the other time. Okay. So, we went there and to my surprise, I heard some kind of strange shoutings. Your rock, your tie, your dynamite, your kiko, your... Okay. As if you are at a market. The place. people were marketing something I never seen. And you were hearing your rock. Yeah, your, your rock, tie. your tie, your gomoza, your ashish. You were marketing this. I asked my friend, what is this? And said, This place is a different world. Though. He's coming. And he entered. You see, our place of use is as such that they just look like the military tent covered with cloth and that kind of. So no matter the number of times you break it down, you don't do anything. Just the next minute, you wrecked it again. Okay. So he entered one. I was surprised what this guy was going to do in the tent. But just after five, ten minutes, I decided to go in also. And I saw him with... That time, I didn't know it was the bunker. He had some pipe-like thing in the mouth. Okay. He had lighted matches, not knowing he was using cocaine. Wow. So I saw him and said, Ah, now... Oh, we be saying our own country when I'm so bad driving. Me man, no we new opium, new way in our doubt. So he had courage and bought one from that time. One chunk of rock was five cities way back eighty something. Wow, fifty thousand. Very expensive. So he bought me one. I used it. I didn't see it well until the next one, and one. It's too much. A thousand is not enough. So when behold, my first day I tested this thing, I sold everything on me and came home with my boxer shorts and singlet. Hold on. You tried the first one. The first rock hit. You were, you were not certified with yeah. what you took. So you decided to try the Take next one. Take the second one. And then you, the second one. The second one gave me a feeling for a thousand. And a thousand is never enough. The second one gave you a feeling to buy. Not to buy, by any means possible, get a thousand. Because it is not only buying that can get you the drugs, but. Let me ask you if you talk about feeling. Yeah. What kind of feeling are we talking about? And this here? kind of feeling is beyond description. I'll say it is euphoric, it is an obsession with an extreme desire of your environment, where, how you use it, the kind of feel, you know? Mm -hmm. Drugs are not openly used. And the mere fact that you secretively sit somewhere and use this thing to your own convenience gives you a different feeling. That is the euphoria. So you sold everything? I sold everything on me. I sold my shoes for Chalewate. The pusher himself will even give you the appeal first. Charlie, you boot to your field. See now, I bought the yard on your way. You boot to your brain, my mouth for being in my mouth, then sitting down. Charlie, I like your jeans, so bring your jeans and make her give you some four rocks and two ties. Your watch, my bag, my champagne, my everything. So I came out, I came home at dawn. You I didn't want anybody to see me. And how my outlook had changed was I was coming home with Chalote, boxer shorts and singlet. Oh, yeah, I could be job and Dear, oh, yeah, a bit inquisitive, no. I made her know that 
I've been robbed. If you are me, man, in our obituary, me jaya ba me buy me bag in our So that's the story you came back with. That's the story I came back with. So because of the quantity I taken in the first day, I started craving for it. I didn't even know that was cravings. But I was just thinking it is a feeling that need to be repeated because it was just about the same time. That, that's the next day. The next day I was feeling a bit feverish, cold, nausea, and some strange feeling. That's what we call the techie. And craving. you were not aware it was... I wasn't aware. So still in that mood, I was thinking of how best I get rid of I was seeing it like malaria. Okay. But my guide called me. That time we were using landline phones. And said, we are here. I'm saying, hey, we are Ah, na dia ye chile on kwa. Dia u kwa unum ye. Ye bere na u nyari. No, u yari ampa. Shia me wo point four. Na, mi kute bina ye nchu chune ye nchu ye be. Hey, I go away have a view. Speed. Two point four. You could do ye no. A fix it, fix it. And he said, no, the area anymore. He said, hey. Ah, I did well. Instantly. Instantly. Instantly reprieve. And you call back. Oh, China, oh, what to? We saw my own phone, oh, what to? Uh-huh. Really? Demonic. Huh? Into no. Oh, sorry. Into... You kill you, you you, you ganja no, Efra we na you like cigarettes, no. And then the no, oh, and then the no, no, I'm a different crowd. Yeah, they're different, or the chocolate foil be, yeah, the powder, and the gusso, and ah. Or money jawa say ah anyway dear be papa chem dear train and crap. I mean train and be into a new euphoria and idea o china fan na oda o kasan na oda o jina o na oda o nam y na oda say a dre dear be ye pa a dre ma da on ferry will be ade and uh misume pemba into a juan me de ya no mat me ya ma fed ye it, it came to a level uh, it was money against my drugs because I was still schooling, I wasn't working. It in then I mean you scan out cut the quantity I like. Because you are not working. Because I'm not working. I started with pill free. What if you knew my Ira, my mommy the phone to Ira, we da Ira, we go away, Ira, we be a Ira. To the extent of me, I'm here in the band of crime, and you're to know, money or may you right? Okay, uh, you got married at a point, yeah. I was married, I had two girls, two daughters. At what age do you remember? At almost around 24 25. You got married now. I've smoked drug for almost 27 years, yeah. So, what really put me into marriage was I was already using my drugs before I got married. Okay. But along the line in 81, I lost my father. So my father bequeathed to us some properties around the Tessano metropolis, which was very valuable. Okay. So upon my addiction basis, I decided to liquidate some and make money. And for the fear of everybody seeing and saying that, ah, what don't Papa fear one fan then I had to get somebody around me. To make me look responsible. So you sold the house. Sold the house. Built my own personal chamber and hall, self-contained, two apartments, top and down. We have about three houses in the Tesano But who, who gave you the documents for that? The building? documents. Ah. I was with my mother. I was the last one of the family. I was with my mother. All the questions that go to my mother is the documents of the property my father left for me. But just after O level, yeah, just after A level national service, I decided not to school again. The drugs was taking all my time. So the best thing I wanted to do was to leave the system, go outside, kill myself with the drugs where nobody can see me. So I started 
developing an attitude of recovering whatever my father had left me testamentary. Okay. Yo. So, so you were not working. I wasn't working. So you sold the house. So what house. did you use the money for? For drugs and the obsession of all these things. That's what I'm saying. I used some negligible amount just to build something to make me look responsible. Yeah. I got a woman, a fancy woman, I had two issues with her. I was trying to play the role of a father at the expense of my drugs. For everybody to see that, yes, you are responsible. But it wasn't the best at all. Because it is another way of passing innocent people through a serious trauma. That is what you cause your family. That is what I cause my family. That is my new club family. Okay. Not the extended one. Yeah. So I saw that no. Because what I buy for them the next day I sell it back. Whatever Any, I buy. Home, you, you come home, daddy is home. Daddy is bringing this home and then daddy takes I it back. I bought myself a stove, a microwave, a well implemented kitchen and a current ladies' kitchen. A good environment that you want us to work. But you'll be there and you we we'll be watching TV and I tell you that I can smell gas. There is gas in the room, which means the cylinder is leaking. Tomorrow I'll go and work on it. That is my first cure in the morning. It goes and doesn't come back. It again. shouldn't even come back because I bought it with my own money. <laughs> you see, so these are some of the ways I used to get rid of all the things I bought in the house. At a point in time, I saw that, no, it is becoming too much. It is better I tell my wife that this is my style. So you told your wife? I told her plainly that, Charlie, me say na me, yo, and I didn't you know. And you are there to me, I didn't. It just is, yeah. And one soon, I will me, yeah, sir. You see the problem? Where and when she cannot talk. Go on, say, yes, I am see me. Yes, I am in pepper, say, me can't be now, me back. Because I see me do it, yeah. If you have a child, I'm a man who prison, to be pesa, dear. Just to. At a point in time, she just bought it away with a huge sum of money from the proceeds of the building I sold with the children for six, seven years. Now, I didn't see them until I came here for recovery. Um, so, at the point, you had no money. So where were you getting money to smoke? Now I was using communist inferior tactics. When I Come say again. Communist inferior tactics. What is that? When I say communist inferior tactics, there are ways to make somebody make commitment within a legal framework, but outside the true cause. Within like a legal framework. Framework, yeah. Uh, what I, one of the things that took me to prison was... I was in Tessano. There are lands that were fallow. So what I do is I erect an AMA signpost there. Were you working with the AMA? No, I have full knowledge of their operations and whatever they do. This kind of stop work, stop work, and things so is my work. You've been writing them? Yeah, I have a way of you, making... You had a contract from AMA to be writing? They can never give me that contract. I was doing it out of my own discretion. So you see new buildings? Any new developing structure, there should be an environmental permit for erecting the structure. Because your building might block another building's space for air. So there are ways environmental protection under AMA will give you the permit for projection. So you found that loophole and you bought your own paint? I do my own thing. Do you have no. some accomplices you work with? No, none were so intelligent and smart as I was. And I didn't want any way within which somebody would leak information upon what I do. So, the code is one. I do it myself. So maybe I'll, I'll erect the signboard, I'll write on it, area site for area community hospital. And you cannot challenge the government for raising an area community hospital. Such a viable projection no aside all this every land in ghana is under the jurisdiction of the state yeah for which reason land is not sold lease. there is transfer of ownership but not ownership yeah there is a lease on a deed of conveyance 
for 70 years, which is now 50 years or so, 100 by 70. So I knew all those things because just as my father died, I was running that kind of vesting ascent. And so for instance, I have my property. You come, you write, stop work. What happens next? When you start any projection, I can't write, stop work. You have to produce permit from AMA. And so you don't I, have I, it. I, I, when I, you even have it, I'll relocate your hold jurisdiction. On. So when you write on my property, yeah, I come the next day, I see stop work. You see stop work. You'll be scared because you are bent on finishing your project. Okay. I have informants around that are with you, but I don't know. They will tell you to go to this office. Tell me, 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 come here. me, be any baby. So they if will you, come to the AME office. They they won't come there. I have my outfit numbers and things. So okay, with you. So they, they will call they you. They will call when you call. I'll relocate you. True. I'll come and meet you at town and country planning and I hear me. You will be there. I will be there. Do you have an office there? I don't have an office, but I have an unofficial office outside the building. So you meet them outside. I meet them um, neatly dressed. Neatly dressed, of course. Then we make a makeable settlement. You make a commitment, and we relocate in one way or the other. Or you pay charges of encroachment, then we relocate. It means that. Hospital or school will not come on there, there which is to... against the community. So you have a price to pay. Yeah, you cannot change thoughts of the government just like that, unless you have stiff right hands. Wow. Yeah. So, so you you were making money from it. Of course, I was making good money from that. And after I put up another thing, strategy to make money was to investigate VAT. Ah, were you a private investigator? Uh, no, I'm more than a private investigator due to my educational background and the intelligence I bought from school. Because all my time I've lived to know that VAT is the only independent body that takes taxes and reiterate them into building of roads and other things. Okay. But I thought that ever since I was born to where and when I was standing, almost 20-something years now, I've seen that VAT is not doing their work. It is either the money accounted for goes into different pockets or it's being mismanaged. So I had to go into it as a sample space myself. I went to a VAT outfit around Tesano. I'm a, I'm a, <coughs> I'm a graphics designer myself. Okay. So I designed a complimentary card for myself. I had a VAT file. Then I got VAT audit letters, the companies that owe. So How I'm, are you getting them? Ah, people upon negligence, they did them me to have to do my work. So I just improvised the way to make money from the debtors. When I save you the debtor letter, within 21 days, your outfit will be locked down if you haven't paid. Yeah, so instead what I do is, when I come, I had a receipt book or I tell you that. You owe 100 million, but I know it is hard these times. So just make a commitment of 50 million and give me myself 5 million as a sign of motivating me. I'll give you a paid receipt. I did that until I assumed almost 4 point something billion from this work. That is the living proof that the monies collected as tax officers is not well accounted for. Because I should have been caught earlier on for impersonation, not now. Were you caught for impersonation? I was finally caught, but that was what freed me and reduced my sentence. Which year? Uh, 2014. So, finally, the people were serving their clients with different debt letters. And when they go, they show them paid receipts. When they go, they show them, pay, hey, now I then I'm going to book work right here. So what they had to do is they keep about four or five of those people with that receipts at the head office so that they identify the person who the VAT office too is very close to my house. So one of one early morning, one of us on my spree to go get high, I need to get some letters and do my improvision well. I went there, I saw a woman pointing at me. I said, What is it? I said, Brian, now buy her. 
my amount of 50 million, or she says, so in my pedus. We sit near the bar. She say, I achieve, and you now see Achimo. Achimo only on Munkan. I mean, we do what they are saying. We do what they are saying, yeah. So then, as he said, no, what the woman said, they attract public attention. So they don't know the policeman where they did that. I want to use the place of convenience. The letters and the evidence they go take prosecute me or he did some a file inside. So what we do be I go in there to the place of convenience. And I just turn around, move some letters and ID card and things from the file, put it into the system where the water did now fast I stop the water. For that. Still with the desire that when I'm free, I'll come and take them and use them. I'll not be to spoil them. Because mm. the work no stop. You see that too. So from there, but I came out. I came out, policeman, they can't question me, you know, I say, no, I need a tissue paper. That's why I come out. You see that thing? They say tissue, they are go get some, they can't go take graphic cam. You go bring the graphic, then I give out my bag, so make you hold down for safekeeping at the camp. So you search the bag before I come. No trace. Then I come with start the VAT with me. Then I start to alienate charges towards the commissioner for VAT and assistant commissioner for VAT and things. Just to, if I don't implicate them, the case will look too simple that my sentence will be more than I can carry. So you started implicating of them? Of course. It is upon the pretext of negligence. That had access to infiltrate and get all these kind of documents to do this work. I don't work at VAT, but how come I'm operating VAT outside the building of VAT? You see how that thing go. So you were sent to court. I was sent to court. I was charged for impersonation, and the assistant commissioner and the commissioner Ben and Mr. Samuel Blankson were charged for negligence of duty and dereliction. What was your sentence? My sentence was supposed to be four years, but I was given the opportunity to appeal. Yeah, do I have anything to say? And I just explained what I've told you. that I've seen that monies collected from taxes were not well used. So I wanted to use myself as a sample space to prove this thing. And it's true. Upon the negligence of these people who are supposed to be in proper position mm -hmm. to check this kind of things. Look at I've, I've duped the system over serious amounts. So you were sent to prison? So I was sent to prison for oh. finally for two years because I appealed to the legal body that I have a wife who is indisposed and my mother is of age and I'm the breadwinner of all these people mm. in spite of what I do. So what will become of them? I have children. If I spend a long term in prison, by the time I come back, I'll see my daughters on the street as sex hawkers. I'll see my wife doing the same. And I'll see my mother dead. And I believe legally you are not doing this to hurt me, but you are correcting me. For which reason there should be another look at. So you were given two years? I was given two years. Yes. To in someone prison? I went to in someone prisons and I was there on transferred to a camp prison. Where? Because two years is a transfer sentence. Okay. Yeah. Was it James Camp? No, I think I've, I've come to James Camp on two occasions already. So, so I was, was taking third, to, That was your third one, your third prison. My, 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 my sentence is there, they plenty. Oh. My sentence is they plenty. At the, at, the, at the go come June, July, when they call you a June, July prisoner, which means when they discharge you, you know they reach one month, then you come again. So you were a June, July prisoner. I was a June, July prisoner. We heard you are popularly known as evil. Yes, I'm popularly known as evil. When we go to in someone prison, evil, everybody knows you. Everybody knows me, especially because of my 2012 and my 2014 interview with Crime Check. Why were you called evil? Uh, it started from Achimota School. Okay. I was so sharp, so smart, so criminally minded that everything you want to institute, I need to play an active role to make it look real. And that time too, I was half parented. My mother was mm -hmm. a marriage counselor for Methodist Ghana. 
Wow. Yeah, and my sister was married to a Pentecostal pastor. So they were visiting me with a church bus. And everybody was surprised that, hey, and you had the name Evo. Yeah. In fact, the name too had effect on me. But I wasn't thinking twice when I need to affect any Evo thing. Um, so you were acting as um, an official from VAT, from AME. What else were you doing to get money for your drugs? To get money. There are a thousand ways I used to get money. Even in the prison. I made money. I remember somewhere. In prison? Around, yeah, in prison. Where were you making the money? There, there are laws in prison. They don't do so, I will do. I will commit you into activity and you'll be charged for wrongdoing. Okay. Don't stand here. I'll come and stand there. I'll give you a reason for standing there. You wouldn't like it. You will act. I'll give you a charge. Law is there. Don't smoke weed in prison. But I find weed there. I smoke it there. It's not my fault. You say this place is a security confined zone and i find we here then you people are not secured because i'm a drug addict coming to reform this is a correctional center and yet i smoke here and you can't catch me that i've smoked <laughs> at the end of the day it will be me and you go take the charge you way you catch me it be me and you go share the center yeah. so it be some no they interdict some officer that was ankafu prisons Okay, mm. you were taken to Ankafu. I've, I've served in Ankafu prisons twice, both the camp and the main prisons. I've been there on two occasions. Wow. Fraud, 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 fraud. I understand sometimes you people can fake accidents. Is yeah. it true? It's very true. It is very true. How that, is it done? Uh, let's let's take let's take our, our railroad the one in front of us you see most often in the morning it's very busy okay the incoming cars are more than the outgoing cars okay yeah so you take the out the incoming cars okay. that is where pressure is and instead of walking outside the lane you walk on the lane upon basis of negligence but if you go cause the accident to the loose one crabby you go use your elbow hit the side mirror. Okay. They, they hit them in such a way they move. I go feel hit them one side, jump over the screen to the other side. Hold on. If I lie them, do. Is, is, there, is it a, a moving car which is on top speed? Of course, moving car, 40, 60 km. And is it is the cars, the cars you've been, I don't know. My victims, cars, my victims. Are they on top speed? I say 40, 60 kilometers. Okay. Yeah. And then you jump. I will hit the side mirror on my immediate side. That will cause your attention to be there and I'll jump across the screen. It can even be a windscreen break and I lie in the middle lane. It's smart. Italians taught us this work. And you lie Accident there. Drive. What happens to the driver? The driver. The driver, you will be my victim. What happens to you at the think of? It will be by, the money by, I want to make from you. But you are down. So will you I'm stand? down. I have a stiff man there who rushed to the scene. Okay. Go go there number. Oh, I can number me. We have been saying say free mo. So then on you two, if you be humanitarian enough, but I say make we do it. Make we see the car inside go hospital. The hospital going where I go show you say me. I know they go hospital. Be here by the sun. Yeah. So now you make your commitments. That time, uh, we will get some toy gun with the use. When you dare your back, you know, go feel look back. What? Your gold chain, your wedding ring, your waiting, waiting, all the bonus. So you fall down, you have another person on standby. Yeah. Who rashly. Uh, if he go come tell you, say, ah, driver, if he go force you to stop, because some drivers are out of here, when you knock you, know, they go. Hmm. If you go to Tesano police station, my pictures are there. The, the only human being where they knock car. You see so before. So you are paid? One the time, you pay, pay for my medical bills and we will never go to the hospital. I can take you through a spree for one month in the bills. So Always you'll be calling them? I will call you. You'll be negative contact. I'm going to your house with you. Ah, call you. Their phone will be... Ah, no. I want to establish direct contact. Where and when, when I need you, I can come. And even at dawn, I'll come to you. 
and tell me you feel pains. They don't be telling you you feel pains. The way you see me, you will see I feel pains. The way you knock me, you know she say I feel pains. <laughs> then why don't you go to the hospital? The hospital. If you are feeling pains, then let's go to the hospital. It is a fake pain. It is pain for the money. I'm not hurt in any way because it's something that I do. I practice. I jump over things. I hate things intermittently. So there is nothing wrong with me. Kweku Gardner. Yeah. Where is your mom? Ah. Uh, because uh, you told me you lost your daddy. 81. Way back in eighty one. So and, is and your mom around? No, I lost my mom just last year. Just last year. You contributed to her death, right? Uh. Directly or indirectly, it will be believed that I, con I contributed to her death because my mother loved me so much and my mother was bent on seeing me live a clean and a recovered life. But she, she was aware you were into drugs. Yeah, my mother, my mother used to give me money to go and smoke drugs because when she lives without that thing, it will come the TV, the fridge and things, so I know they did. Ah. She was giving you money to smoke. Of course. You have to make peace in the house before you go outside. <laughs> yes. Before she goes out, she will give you money. Before, you my one? mother had a school. Okay. In Tessano. So even when the school reopens and she brings home the school fees, she claims every day there is a spirit in her room that makes some of the money lost. But you so were that, you are that spirit. I was the intermittent spirit. <laughs> so we could come, let's count the money. I'm taking it to bank. And she knows I'm going to steal. So she loves it that way. We are Mrs. and I'm Period. So she'll bring the money. We could help me count. So while she counts, to be my mom, so how they do their packing. Ah, you pack the money in your ah. Is it coins or notes? Of course, if I they see coins and notes, I no go take coins. And if it be papers, I they take bigger notes. So you hide it in your mouth fast. So you go there, I they go piss can down, go move four thousand, put down. I can't sit down again. So before we go count the money finish, the money itself we no say. It'd be one billion in top tier, like 200 and something. Then he said, We come with that. Say, I send a book with that account. <laughs> so, I want to take this opportunity to apologize to my belated mother everywhere he did. Make my mother give me the audience for an apology because I wished that she could see me like this. Because of the Christian statutes he bring us up with, I never lived to fulfill her dream. But I think this is the best time I will make people turn eyes to look back to her, although she no day. Because I am bent on leaving a landmark that will make her conscious of my change. Were you bringing drugs home? I was smoking drugs home with my mother like this. No. She didn't know what drugs was. Hold on. Your mom will be around. We they watch TV. We all we they watch TV. I face my bunker. My mother they sit there. My wife they there. My children they there. They don't know what cocaine be. Only that are beno, that are beno, that are beno. And that ijabe she wa no, ijabe she wa no. And they never ask you what you were doing. They they tried to know what it was, but you know, I cannot tell them what it is. But those who know me know that it is cocaine. Although you cannot even come close to wish to see what it is. Maybe pie when you show me cocaine. No. What was your intake like? I told you some time back that I'm an addict with high intake. I uh, mean, the booster, booster, I go buy, I go go, I go to if again, come, go, come. No, it'll be long story. So, me, I wake up done. After I steal the money, finish at the keeper. That'll be my only glory. you still from your mom? Ah. Or other people? Different areas. All the crime techniques I show you. I will go down. I wake up early in the morning, 4.30. I 
I'll make sure I cure one gram rock with half gram tie. One gram. One gram rock that time. No be small money. Hey. And my own be, I will share inside like eight. If I take the first two and finish, then the tie. Uh, if I go one round camp. I get bike anytime I go see the bike say park now for move. Uh, I for go one round camp. So but before evening there, yeah, everything could have passed. Then I start working towards a different thing. How much were you spending in a day? Roughly? Approximately 400, 500 Ghana City a day. That that made me sell the house. For the money tune I need, you know, being here at the guest. 400, 500 yeah, cities a, a day. day. Ah. That thing, it be like one matches box where you go take smoke ammo. Okay, it's very that one That one be the only. That, the thing I tell you with that, then with that time, if I have, I say, so you can one like is two thousand. Huh? Two thousand. Two thousand. The bar no go cool down, say, be rock song. Rock song. No cooling. No heroin. Because if I say that, you know, I go feel dull. And no. I want to see heaven. And the God way they did it. So he be the rock song. You see that thing? Drugs doesn't pay, you know. Where do you think you would have gotten to if you had not gotten yourself into drugs? I should have been an architecture, big architecture something, or IT self. Because I started with IT and I went off to. And aside of this all, I have some, I've seen that I have some extreme gift legally. We have, ah, now I'm going one areas we are for the, I'm far behind time. I did see my mates and at the marvel. But the only joy is life. We all have life. If I will look their money and their academic excellence and what they acquire and what they are moving with. Oh shit. No, I like myself. I love myself more having passed through this trauma and coming back as a clean man. It makes me feel a sense of consent that God has something for me. Where, where, where are your children? Where are they? My children are at Kaswa with my divorced wife. She's divorced because she left uncompromising. <laughs> yes. What was she the last left because she felt like she should leave. The last time I heard from her was somewhere last month. Eh? I was in a TV program. She called into the program. But you've not seen her for no, how long? No, For how long? For almost six to seven years. You've not seen your wife? Yeah. What of your children? I see them on pictures. I see them in pictures. <laughs> What's happened? That kind of thing. They call you? Yeah. My children are now of age, 10 and 11. They call me. They talk to me. They need this. They need this. Me and few mama and things. Uh, but you've not made time to see them. I want to make good time to see them, but the time should be at the right time. So what, what is your definition of a good time? Of a good time. Yeah. A good time means a positive recovery, a good standing man, a professional man, a well-to-do person. And this is not in dispensation of time. Just the shortest possible time. Because of course, it is not how much I have in hand that will make me stand as a man, but it is how best I use the little in hand. Yeah, so that is what I'm saying. How long have you been off drugs? I've been off drugs for almost nine months. Nine months? Yeah. How do you feel? I feel good. I feel good. Because unlike my drug days, I only wake up at dawn with great nostalgia as to how to get money. Money to finish my addiction. And that calls for the evil to pay for the drugs. And uh, alongside all these things, you end up in prison. Yeah. Seven prison. Seven times in prison. Seven times. So I've spent almost 14 years of my 48 years in prison, which has been a good school of hard knocks to me myself. It makes me able to deal with any kind of human being, respective of your background, your education, your standing, and whatever. Have you been involved in robbery before? Robbery, no. Too cheap for me. Too cheap. Why is it too cheap? I don't need to take a gun and go and go and take. No, bring your money. I have thousand ways to get your money from you. Voluntarily. So why should I come with a gun? No. 
the, 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 the story surrounding the use of the gun. You see what I told you? That my accident trap had a used toy gun. Uh -huh. But because of the fear of what is behind you, you don't go even look up. And because of your falling short of commitment, you make it fast. Your wife then will go pay. When I come know your house, yeah, you go run. If now I go give you the the mafias made they can't operate your house and things. So, wow. Do you have me is okay. Now let me let me let me pick this one. I understand it's difficult to stay away from drugs. It is difficult to stay away from drugs when you owe allegiance to your own perception. Just to say no to drugs is not just in a statement form or it's, how best you can It's shout. not just a statement. No. It needs a process of commitment. First, you have to understand that you need a power higher than your thoughts. And the only stronger, greater power ever living and ever fearful is the Most High God. In your own definition, what is addiction? Addiction is a brain relapsing disease with an obsession characterized by the compulsion to use any mind or train substances. Nature say addiction ye a dream we are ah a ye a corner ni or she se ube yusu be be a be ma wa dream wa touch ma. Some addicts are taken to the psychiatric hospitals. Would you recommend that? I wouldn't recommend that because I'm a typical evidence of psychiatry treatment. It doesn't work. Have you been taken to the psychiatry? Yes, I've been to addictive substance unit, i.e. psychiatry, a whole lot of those places. And it's not working. I say it doesn't work simply because the cravings surrounding addiction when you need the drug cannot be altered with any kind of substance than a sedative. And the only work of a sedative is to put you to sleep. And after three, four times use of that sedative, you'll be switching from your prime drug of cocaine mm -hmm. to another sedative of what kind they use for you. So it is just a Peter to pay poor deal. No, it's better you stay off. God will give you the energy to endure. Some keep saying that staying away from drugs, you need to go through some pain. Have you gone through that? Uh, uh, everybody owes allegiance to the perception of pain. So but it's a I see it like it's a discomfort, not pain. It's a discomfort. Because feeling very cold when the sun is up like this makes you uncomfortable. The nausea, water, ice, feeling weak, all these things are signs of cravings. Okay. So I call it a discomfort, but not a pain. No. How true is this? Uh, I've interviewed a couple of addicts and they keep saying that when you take the drugs and you take your bath, it takes away the energy in the drug. How true mm, is it? I would say it is not true. It, it looks like as I, I also have to say that they owe allegiance to their perception because per the way you started, mm -hmm. if you keep health standards, you cannot tell me the drug is impairing your health standards. Not until all your reprieve is built on drugs. That means drug first and nothing comes. So you were taking your bath? I take my bath early in the morning because... I, Per my background of education, I wouldn't like any mate to see me dirty, looking shabby, because they are the same people I'm going to take money from. Charlie, many a juma or PhD, oh, yes, I'm in fact picture and I'm far away in brand. Oh God, now you've got job, take this hundred. Tomorrow I'll go to the next one. Tomorrow I'll come to your chambers. Tomorrow, you see. So how can I look dirty? The reason why did the talk say the drug, if you bath, you know water. It's a refreshment. Even the depressed person for take cold bath just to change in condition. Maybe so. So the addict 
owe allegiance to the perception, say, no matter how we hide, the water desensitize them, then it make it look like the euphoria mm -hmm. is here. If the euphoria is here, why not if you use the water, no, you go take it? No, it be your state of mind. No true. Gardner, um, I know people are watching you right now. Those who are into drugs, is it that easy to say no to drugs? Uh, uh, it is not that easy to say no to drugs, but it needs confidence to say no to drugs. Because if you look at where you're coming from, per how far you have gone into drugs, then the easier you have to say no to drugs. Confidently. Not until your reasoning is so impaired that you cannot look back and assess yourself and tell yourself that you have gone too far. You can never owe that allegiance of confidence to say, I want to stop. Because per where you are coming from and per where you have got to, there is the need for a change. You are marching time. You are not walking on. So you need to change your steps. Um, another thing people keep asking is that, can we end drugs in Ghana? Is it possible we can end nah, it? I see it like an impossibility, but still we can advocate for eradication of drugs and the effect of drugs on the people that use. That is, we should help advocate to, uh, if I should say, we should help advocate for people or to decriminalize addiction. Okay. Yes. When addiction is being decriminalized, now we set up youth centers with doctors that will check whatever we do. We are smoking so many things that are not heroin and cocaine. But Serious. out of negligence, we call it like that. That Those substances are killing the people more. So it means most of the substance people smoke. Yeah, they are, are called cocaine, but not cocaine. Because we ourselves are not certified scientists to know what best we take. And most of the addicts are naive and illiterate. They just enjoy... Anything goes. Yeah. So you can't even prove that. What you are using. Yeah. You're smoking poison. Currently, you are in the rehab center. Yeah. You are a recovery... I'm addict. a recovering addict. Recovering yes. addict. No addict recovers until life turns down. All through your lifetime, you are recovering. You are liable to relapse. You are liable to slip. They are all part of recovery. The best is what you hope for. So you are a recovering, yeah, a recovering addict. addict. Ha, okay. So if I understand you well, there is no time As to recover. you cannot recover. Yeah. There is no time for recovery. So recovery is a lifetime thing. Just a simple event and lead you to relax. A same simple event can help you to recover. So you only have to learn to live a day clean as the last day on earth. Get on with that. God is going to help you. You, you seem to be very popular in most of the ghettos. Last time uh, we went to Sahara and it's like most of them they know you, and some were even happy to see you. Yeah. Why? Simply because of my background and the kind of institutional instincts I used to improvise and how I made my money, the criminal mind. I work with everybody, I use everybody. Some may be trapped, some may be hedging, some may be accident. Irrespective of who you are, I need to make my money. So, in the ghetto, well Currently, you are chosen rehab, and you are one of the key people. You've been going around to uh, talk to people and bring people in here. Uh, I know chosen rehab needs a lot of support. Of course. Um, what kind of support should you need? As I told you earlier, chosen rehab is a threefold ministry. We do orphanage, we do rehabilitation of drug and alcohol addicts into potential icons for nation building. And for short, we take care of the needy. You know, Kujiraji said that to educate a man is to educate an individual. For which reason, if you educate a woman, you educate a nation. Based on this, 
we owe allegiance to change for women. Our facility that is housing the women is deteriorating, and one man cannot take that responsibility alone. We're looking for philanthropists, people that have more than enough, people that are centered on value. Even you can still help with your strength to come, let us raise a home, even in your name. It okay. will live in memoriam with your name forever. For as long as this woman and this rehabilitation is concerned, this is the best we need for the woman. For food, clothes, and items, you know, you owe allegiance to it long time. Anything that you use as a seed into this kind of destitute, in quote, God is going to recommend. We owe allegiance to the orphanage. They need support. Anything that will be necessary in the home for a child is needed. How do we reach you, uh, Chosen Rehab? Our Chosen Rehab, our office number is 0555-466-374. This same line is a Momo number. Some may be touched, but the distance may be ahead. Your token can be shown as a seed into this organization. And God will never forget you. It works if you work it. Okay, Gardner, thank you so much. We are so grateful. So that's Kweku Gardner for you. And um, that was a touching story. God bless you for watching. If you're on YouTube, kindly subscribe to the channel. God bless you. Bye-bye.